Patellar fractures. Patellar fractures can involve different topics, and I'm going to try to highlight the important points related to patellar fractures. Number one, conditions associated with patellar fractures. One of them is the classic bruises in patellar dislocations. What is the cartilage injury pattern? We know that the medial patellofemoral ligament is the primary stabilizer of the patella. So when the patella dislocates, you will have an injury to that ligament and you will get injury to the medial patellar facet articulation cartilage. And you may get an osteochondral fragment. In addition to that, you get a lateral condyle injury. The bipartite patella, it occurs in about 8% of the population. It could be bilateral in about 50%, and it is usually in the superior lateral aspect of the patella. Observe, don't fix it. It's not an acute fracture. It may need excision or lateral release. Patellar sleeve fracture in children. It can occur in children between 8 to 10 years old. It is a rare condition. The patient will be unable to do straight leg raising, so you suspect the extensor mechanism is injured. The patient may have a high riding patella on the x ray with a palpable gap when you examine the patient. The x-ray may show a small flexor bone as the patellar tendon avulses with a portion of the distal pole of the patella. Sometimes the bony injury is so small the condition can be missed, so have a high index of suspicion. You may need to get an MRI to confirm the diagnosis and the treatment usually ORIF if the fracture is displaced. Another area of interest is basic anatomy and biomechanics. Patilla is a large sesamoid bone. The quadriceps is inserted at the proximal pole and the distal pole give attachment to the patellar tendon. The patella is triangular in shape. The proximal three-fourths of the patella is covered with cartilage. However, the distal 25% is not. The patella increases the power of the extensor mechanism by about 50% because it displaces the extensor mechanism anteriorly and that will increase the moment arm. Classification of patellar fractures. Transverse fractures, the fracture can be non-displaced or displaced. When the fracture is displaced, the patella can be pulled apart by the attached quadriceps tendon, and the patient will be unable to do active extension of the knee. Upper or lower pole fracture. Comminuted fracture, which can be non displaced or displaced. This fracture has multiple pieces and it is very unstable and is difficult to fix. Vertical fracture, usually the fracture is stable and non displaced. Osteochondral fracture, a small fracture of the patella, usually associated with acute dislocation of the patella. Exam and x-rays. You may feel a palpable gap. The area of the knee is usually swollen. The patient will be unable to do a straight leg raise. The lateral view of the knee is the best view to see the fracture, 2 to 3 millimeter of displacement means the patient probably will need surgery.
treatment. Non-displaced fracture. If you think the patient extensor mechanism is intact, that the patient is able to do straight leg raise, and the fracture is non-displaced or minimally displaced, and it is usually a transverse fracture in this situation, then immobilize the knee straight in a hinged knee brace for four to six weeks with weight bearing as tolerated. Sometimes the patient cannot move the knee because of the pain, and injection of lidocaine inside the knee can help to assess the integrity of the extensor mechanism. If the patient has a totem knee with 2 mm of displacement of the patella and the extensor mechanism is intact, then the patient will be treated conservatively in a brace or in any immobilizer, no surgery. The operative treatment in some details. The indication for surgery, a displaced patellar fracture and inability to do straight leg raising. When it comes to the operative treatment, you need to know a few facts. Number one, preserve the patella if possible. Number two, the tension band fixation technique is the gold standard for the treatment of displaced patellar fractures. Usually the fracture is a transverse fracture and the tension band technique is the one that gives us most of the complications. We will do reduction of the fracture, then we hold the reduction with reduction clamps. At least two KORs are placed across the fracture. And we're going to do an anterior tension band organized in a figure 8 pattern. We use 18 gauge wire in a figure 8 fashion. You need to put the figure 8 tension band wire close to the patella superiorly and not far away from the patella because that may cause construct instability and fracture displacement. A second wire may be placed circumferentially around the patella. Bending the K wires from both ends may decrease migration of the wires and decrease the complication. The wire that is bent at both ends may be difficult to remove. The tension band wiring use K wire or it can use cannulated screws, and through the cannulated screws you put the wires. It doesn't matter if you have an open fracture or closed fracture, you treat it the same. When you put wires, it means symptomatic hardware, and it means secondary reoperation. They found that the longitudinal screws and the tension band wires are more superior. That tension band construct, when performed correctly, will provide absolute stability and will convert the tension forces from the muscle pull into compression forces at the articular surface. You want to have anatomic reduction and stable fixation. Don't judge the reduction by what you see at the surface of the fracture. Try to see and feel the joint if you can. Check the x-ray carefully. The surface of the patella may be well reduced, however the joint may be distracted or displaced. If you tighten the circulage wire aggressively, you may have a good looking surface, but you may have a distracted joint. After you fix the patella, you will do a range of motion of the knee before closure and you will give them a hinged knee brace, locked in extension with weight bearing as tolerated. Weight bearing is controversial. Some people start weight bearing early, some people start weight bearing after four to six weeks. A cane may be helpful to the patient.
You will begin active flexion at two to three weeks. The patient will lie prone. The patient flexes and extends the knee. When the patient is prone, it avoids active knee extension and avoids excessive stress on the fracture site. At six weeks, you can unlock the brace and start moving the knee and gradually increase the flexion. What if the fracture is comminuted? We got options. We can use the peripatellar circumferential wire loop fixation, which is commonly used as an addition to other methods of fixation. And you can use a plate fixation utilizing a low profile implant and providing a stable fixation. It is becoming popular. Number three, you can excise the patella partially or completely. So you can do, for example, partial patellectomy. The distal pole is extra articular. And if it is severely comminuted and less than 40% of the patella, then you can excise it. But in general, you would like to preserve the patella. If you can't preserve the patella and RIF is not possible, then do partial patellectomy and preserve the largest piece. Partial patellectomy may be necessary, but open reduction and internal fixation, if possible, is associated with a better outcome. You will do the partial patellectomy in severely comminuted inferior pole fractures, and you will do medial and lateral retinacular repair, and poor outcome may occur with removal of more than 40% of the patella. Total patellectomy will be done when the fractured patella cannot be fixed. Total patellectomy can cause extensor lag and loss of the extensor strength. The quadriceps torque is reduced by about 50%. Complications Symptomatic hardware and knee pain is the most common complication after patellar fracture fixation, especially if you use the tension band technique. It requires implant removal in about 50% of the time. This complication will include the hardware migration. Failure after patellar fracture fixation occurs in about 20% of the time due to increasing age, fixation with wires, technical errors, and non-compliance. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.